My name is David Lloyd. I'm 30 years old. Uh, for as long as I can remember, I've been a drug addict and drug user. Most of my life, I've been in and out of jails and juvenile detention centers and prison. For the most part, coming up as a kid, uh, I was infatuated and obsessed with drugs and getting high and doing wrong and being a drug dealer and drug user and the gangster life and guns and all that. And uh, eventually, growing up, I got into all that and it led me to being locked up and in institutions and going to prison. And uh, after a while, it being fun, then uh, kind of died off and I became more or less just a drug user instead of a drug dealer and all the cool things that came with it disappeared and uh, kind of at a point now where I've been locked up entirely too much. It's kind of affected me mentally and I'm at just a giving up point on it and trying to get my life together and uh, it's seeming to be a lot harder than I thought it would be. The hardest thing about getting your life together or getting it back, however you look at it, for me, it's just been the aspect of doing right. Because, like I said, as long as I can remember, from a really very young age, man, I've always had doing wrong in my head. It's what I wanted to do. I don't know if it was the adrenaline or just the act of not doing what you're supposed to do. So having to completely change my thought process and my actions 100% from what I've always known and done to trying to do the right, sorry, the mosquito, trying to do the right thing and be a regular citizen and conduct or a, a positive member of society, it just, it's, it, it almost seems like an impossibility just because I don't know how to act towards all that. Along the way, I've had bits and pieces of me getting out of jail and trying to do right not really working out, but along the way I've learned how to work hard and uh, how to act accordingly to my environment and the people I'm around. So that, that in a sense is helping me, but it's just, it seems like there's just like a mountain of shit that has to be done just to be at a, a very low level of normalcy. And with that, it's just, it just seems, it seems impossible sometimes, man, just cause I mean, you come out of jail or prison and like you lose everything, you don't have nothing. So to rebuild that back is like, it just seems like it's ne you're never really gonna get there, you know? Let's talk about uh, some of the trouble that you've been in. Uh, the first time that I was locked up, um, it was for smoking weed. I was, the state had taken me from my family or from my mom because she wasn't like fit and I was living with family and me and my cousins went out and smoked some weed. And when we came home, my aunt and uncle knew we were high. And so it was already, the state was already involved. So they didn't want me being living there, corrupting their kids. And so they called the state. So the state came and took me and I ended up being in, like getting tossed around uh, juvenile detention centers and shit like that. And that was kind of like my very first like bit of seeing what the system was about and being locked up behind bars like around like actual criminals like that were like legit <laughs> and i like to think that that scenario in itself and that time being down for the reasoning that i was down is kind of what also formed me into the more negative and criminal that i became later on in life because i looked at it like they just wouldn't let me out they, I had no release date. I was just down until these people said that it was okay for me to leave. And every time it was like time for me to leave, they would pull me back in and hold me there. And so later on in life, it leads me to being that same mindset and not really growing from that, just being stuck in that same mindset. And just recently I was, I had I'd done a two year bid in the jail 
for drugs, obviously, and vi uh, probation violations. And that whole time sitting in there, I had the same thought process that I had as a juvenile that I didn't care because the system was doing nothing to actually help me. They were just trying to cage me. And all that did was breed negative and just hateful like thoughts. And so when I got out, all I did, I went right to the streets. I went straight to selling drugs, straight to being a criminal, straight to just doing evil shit and not caring and not having any remorse for anything I did. Most recently, the reason why I'm on bond now, actually, was I was selling drugs and I was using drugs and I kind of got to a point where I fell off on, on even caring about making money and even caring about selling drugs. I just wanted to get high and I didn't care about like anything or anybody or any anything that was going on in the world. I had no emotions towards shit. I was just numb. I was at a, uh, a friend of mine's house and we were getting high and I had done way too much at, at that of that particular drug and I ended up having a seizure because of it. And the person whose house I was at didn't know what to do when in the midst of me having a seizure. I began to uh, have convulsions like in the seizure and I actually started banging my head onto the, the hardwood or the, the, the tile floor of their kitchen. And they just kind of like watched, I guess. In the midst of me banging my head on the con or on the tile, I, I, I busted my chin wide open, and I actually have a scar, gnarly scar on my chin from it. I busted my chin open, I broke my jaw, and I gave myself a concussion, all in the midst of a seizure. By that time, the girl was on the phone with the paramedics, and I guess paramedics were on the way. Somewhere in the midst of her being on the phone and everything, I actually came to, and I don't remember any of this. I just remember like laying on the floor, and then I remember waking up in a cop car, but. She says that I wake up or I come to and I'm bleeding, there's blood all over me, I'm bleeding all over the floor, and that I started chasing her around the house, trying to attack her, like aggressively. So I guess she says we, I chased her around her house for a couple minutes. Eventually, somehow or another, because I guess I was still like lethargic and still not really fully like capable, that I never actually got a hold of her and that she had like managed to open the front door and just kind of like heard me out and then locked me out, pretty much. I hid in the bushes in the front of the house, trying to hide from the cops when they got there, because I guess me being aggressive, the paramedics also sent cops. And when the cops got there, I picked up a garden shovel and I attempted to attack the police officers. And they tased me, or they tried to tase me one time, and they said that it didn't, my, my, I didn't like take to the, it didn't affect me. I kind of like went through it and then they, he shot me again with the taser gun and that time it, it like I guess it affected me and it registered and then they you know tackled me and then ended up in handcuffs. I woke up in the back of a cop car and that's when like I came to and I remember from that point on that I was just like in the cop car and I couldn't remember my name, I couldn't remember my girlfriend's name, I had no clue where I really was. I just knew that I was in handcuffs and I was in the back of a cop car. So whatever they asked me, whatever they said, I was just denying. I want to see my lawyer. You, I didn't do nothing. I don't have nothing. And I guess I had a, my, I had my little strap book bag on that had some drugs in it. And so they, they charged me with all that. And uh, so I also caught assault on a police officer charge for trying to attack the police. I also had a, um, a warrant out at that point for a, pro a, a probation violation. I knew right then and there, being in the back of the cop car, that I was going away for a long time. That that was it, like, because I was on probation for two possession charges and a paraphernalia charge on top of a violation, and some other like just little charges. And then I just caught another two possession charges, another paraphernalia charge, and the violation. You know what I mean, and all that. So I was, I just kind of accepted that I was going back to prison, which I already knew was coming because I usually just base my, my free time of being out in the world on when I'm going back to prison anyway. So I kind of just accepted it and just went to jail and laid it down. And uh, somehow way another man in, the, in the, the first couple of weeks of being locked up, I just, I, I was, I mean, you know, you clear up from being on drugs and everything when you get in there. And I, I just started having this like, 
moment of clarity of like, there's something, I, I need to try to find something different, any way different than to just let these people send me to prison. Because if I don't, I'm, I'm going to prison. And so I just started thinking about, there was a, a guy that was in my block and I kind of just fed off of kind of what he was trying to do. And it somehow way or another it worked, man. I just, I talked to my lawyer about trying to get like an outside program or some kind of DOC program or even a rehab. And lo and behold, I ended up getting a lawyer in, in Virginia Beach that was, she's just the best, law, the best public defender that you can possibly have. Like it's, she's almost better than having a paid lawyer. She's always, she's just known around the jail and that she really helps you out. And so I presented to her about going to a rehab for 30 days in between me being in jail to try to show and help my situation and maybe, you know, figure out something else. And uh, with, upon me like presenting that to her, she kind of just came up with this, with this whole plan of this place where to go and how I need to do it and what needs to be done. And evidently she just presented it to the prosecutor and dude was like, yeah, like he had, he put up no argument. And for me, that's the first time, I mean, being locked, I'm, I'm 30 now, I've been getting locked up since I was 13. I spent 18 months on the street total. Well, not total, but that's the most I've spent on the street since I was 13. And that's the first time that's ever happened to me, where they were just like, there was no argument. They didn't, they were just like that. Yeah, cool. Go ahead, do whatever you want to do kind of thing. I'm just trying to take that blessing, you know what I'm saying? Like, for what it is. You know, with this opportunity being out on bond, uh, talk about some of the things that you're doing in an effort to try to better yourself and why you're doing these things. You know, talk about the fact that, you know, you're about to be a father and, you know, these are like, there's good things that are taking place in your life that you want to be around for or however that makes you feel. All right. At the moment, as I said, I'm out on bond and I'm trying to keep in mind all the positive things that I have going for me. Uh, that are keeping me motivated to do the right thing and keep me out of jail. Um, my main focus obviously is, has to be my recovery and staying clean and doing what I'm supposed to do for probation and the recovery house that I'm in. Um, I have a little girl on the way, which she's actually due, where my girlfriend's being induced tomorrow. So we are having a baby tomorrow. Um, my support system uh, for the first time this time around, I actually have like a really good group of individuals that are here for me. Uh, give me a minute. I just want to make them proud. This time around, I'm trying to do things a little differently. Uh, like I said, I'm. I'm in a recovery house. I've never done that before. Uh, I am working my ass off to try to get, you know, everything I need or I feel that I need. Um, and I'm trying to be more of a, I'm trying to be more of a father this time, man, because it's like my son, man, he's awesome. So I'm trying to stick to the basics this time instead of worrying about all this, 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 and that and just working on me because I can't do anything for anybody or be anything if I don't you know, I mean, take care of myself. So hopefully here in the next couple months, it'll show, you know, that I'm doing the right thing. And the guy I'm working for, man, he's an awesome dude. Uh, he's from the, from the jump, he's picked me up for work, bring me home, you know, working me to death, but I need it, you know, supporting everything I'm doing. And uh, yeah, I'm just doing it completely different. I'm taking everybody's advice this time, man, instead of thinking I can do it on my own, you know? This work is kind of rough, man. We're doing a lot of demo here at this house in Norfolk. Uh, we started this Monday. Um, it's a little overwhelming in the sense of what they want done and how they, or not they, well, how they want it, but when they want the, uh, all the work to be done. Uh, right now, I'm just breaking down a lot of walls, uh, doing a lot of the cleanup, trying to keep the entire job site clean and neat and orderly for everybody else to come in and be able to do their job and not have to worry about, you know, 
climbing over materials or other people's tools or other people's mess. But yeah, right now uh, we're about done with the demo. Um, we knocked down a bunch of walls, pulled all the uh, old plaster up. Uh, we got right there in the front, there was a pile of rocks and brick, man, excuse my language. I mean, every this whole area was just filled up from, I guess, the workers that came here before and did demo and uh, didn't finish it, so we cleaned all that up. That's what mostly is in there. For me, man, it's, I love it, man, because I finally, for one, get to work for somebody that I respect and enjoy hanging around. Uh, and just to be a part of the come up, if that makes any sense. I mean, because I mean, watching him, I was home when he came home and he had, you know what I mean? He came from nothing, so. You're talking about Jellico. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, Jellico. Uh, and so just, you know, being able to work with him and for him and it's really, it really motivates me. You know what I mean? Like today, man, I woke up and like, I kind of woke up kind of late for a doctor's appointment, a therapy appointment. And, but I just got up, man. I got myself together and I was just motivated, man, to get to work. It feels good, man. It feels good to be out. It feels good to be clear headed and finally taking the time to do what I need to do to get myself together. Uh, Cause you know, I got mental health issues too that I never, took care of all these years. I just always self-medicated or, you know, didn't do anything. And I'm finding out now that like, for one, a lot of people, heads up, you got a door coming. A lot of people that I didn't think I was gonna have friendships with or relationships with that I cherished or, or burned bridges or anything like that, they kind of either came back or, you know, they blossomed into something better than what they were. Uh, like, all right, for instance, my, my son's mother, I have a son that's eight. Uh, before I got locked up, we hadn't talked. I hadn't seen my son in months because of mine and her differences. And I mean, now, man, the other day, I brought him to work with me. And uh, he was here helping me break down walls and doing all kinds of shit, man, having fun. And like, uh, I would have never had that opportunity before, you know, had I not taken the time or the opportunity, I guess, to try to get myself together and figure out, you know, what's the best thing for me. Cause you know, this, this whole being sober and working my ass off, it was, this is all, I'm not gonna say it's completely new to me. Cause I, I had tried it one time when I got out of prison, but for some reason then I was miserable. It was like something was missing. And uh, I don't know, man, I just, I'm enjoying it. And uh, working out, uh, I'm seeing the progress with who I'm working for, the, the work I'm doing, and in myself, man. Uh, I went and see my therapist today, and my, even he said it, like, he sees a big, uh, a big improvement in like my attitude and the way I look at shit and the way I handle situations, man.